Let's bring in NBA analyst Matt Barnes. And, and Matt, hearing LeBron say that, that's what you want your leader to say. It's what you hope he says, right? But it's bad in Los Angeles. They've now lost 15 of their last 21, a season worth seven games below 500 with an experienced roster that LeBron scolded us for questioning a couple of months ago. Playoffs, play in tournament, definitely up in the air in your mind. What's the best case scenario for this Lakers team? Um, the, the, the narrative has changed so much over the season for this team. You know, we're talking about they were a championship favorites at the beginning. Now we're talking about are they going to make the playoffs. But the one superstar that I believe when he says you got to bury me 12 feet deep is LeBron. Yeah. So this team still has a chance. And when we say experience, it's really just saying older. This is an older team. But what I did like, there's no moral victories, but I liked the youth that got a chance to play last night. You know, you got Kent Bazemore out there, Stanley Johnson, Reeves. Um, you know, those guys, those guys need to get more minutes because this is an older team. This team is built for the playoffs. Now they just have to get there. But until then, you know, you're going to have to exert more of the time, you know, play Dwight Howard in the middle. They got to kind of go back to what they're doing at the beginning of the season and, and to me. And it, that's having some of the young guys mix in with Dwight. And you can't expect, I mean, this team is so dependent on LeBron right now with AD going down. Yeah. He's still holding up his weight. But can he really carry this team like he's carried teams throughout his whole career now is the question. You know, I said experience. So I was trying to be nice. I'm glad that you just went there. <laughs> right. It's old. Yeah. And that, that was That's the old. questioning <laughs> from last right. fall, and we got in trouble for saying that, but it ends up right. that it's probably true. Uh, the team that lost to the Lakers uh, last year in the play-in uh, has been excellent all season long, and that is the Golden State Warriors. Let's talk about them for a minute because they're actually struggling as well. Lost to Minnesota and Minneapolis last night. Carl Anthony Towns put on a show. He had a game, 39 points, nine boards. as the T-Wolves offense. Very impressive. It's a potential playoff preview. Uh, as for Golden State, they've now lost six of the last ten, Matt. Still without Draymond Green. Klay Thompson missed his second game with an undisclosed illness, but this was not a good look last night for the Golden State Warriors. Again, six of their last eight they've dropped. Three of those six losses coming by 15 points or more. According to BPI, the Warriors have the second toughest remaining schedule in the NBA, by the way, second to the Lakers. For their next five games, they're on the road beginning tomorrow night. That is against Luka and the Mavs. And I didn't say this, but Luka put up 25 points, eight rebounds, five assists last night against those Lakers. So your former coach, Steve Kerr, cited a lack of connectivity. Sounds very Steve Kerr-like, doesn't it, for their loss to Minnesota. What sticks out to you, though, the most about their struggles of late? Uh, they're just going through a rough patch right now. And, you know, I'm not too worried considering okay. that Dray Draymond has missed several games. Clay has been in and out with an illness. But at the end of the day, heading into the playoffs, you got to think any given time you can beat one team on any given night. But can you beat the Golden State Warriors four out of seven times is the question. I think right now they understand that they've been down this road before, understanding that health is the main priority for this team because when this team is healthy, I feel like they're the best team in the league. I love the youth they've been able to add to the, uh, to the bench. Andre Iguodala's leading that bench crew, whether he's playing or just being there as a mentor for those younger players. So I don't think there's very much concern over there in the Bay Area. They know that Draymond's on his way back. Clay is working his way back. And when these guys are all healthy, they're one of the best in the league, if not the best. And, and, and that's the thing. Their defense, I would say, it's obviously a slip lately. They're averaging 113 points per game, given up versus 102 all season long. But you get those guys back, and this is probably a different story. Let's go back to Sunday. Sixers, the new big three. Joel Embiid, James Harden, and Tyrese Maxey, they combined to score 87 of their 125 points to beat New York at the Garden. So this is round two tonight on ESPN as this new big three adapts to each other. It always takes a little bit of time to create that chemistry. And so far, so good as we say hello to our NBA analyst, Matt Barnes. And it has been a heck of a start for Philly, Matt, with Harden and Embiid paired up. But there's still some adjustments to be made with the addition of Harden. And then there are others whose, whose roles are still being figured out with the change. In your mind, what's the biggest issue that they need to address as they head toward the playoffs? I don't really necessarily think it's an issue. I just think to continue to build that chemistry. Uh, you see Maxi is turning into a young star right before our eyes, and I've been impressed with his ability to handle the ball most of the season, but since James came in, he's been able to play off the ball, knock down shots. He's averaging 24 points a game since the trade. I know it's early, um, but I'm looking to Tobias Harris. Tobias Harris over the last two years in the playoffs has averaged 20 points a game, only shot a little bit over 30% from the three-point line, but I'm not only looking for his offense, but I'm looking for his defense. He's going to be probably the primary defender if they run across Milwaukee, who's going to have to guard Giannis. You know, him and Thibel will be guarding KD if they run across Brooklyn. So um, my thing with this team is this team gave a lot to get James Harden. James Harden was the best player in the trade. They had to give a lot up to get him. So I worry about their depth. They're a very top-heavy team. If you look at their starting five, they have one of the best starting fives in the game. 
But after that, the bench depth is kind of gone in that trade. So it'll be interesting to see how the main five guys can handle a logging majority of the minutes going through the playoffs. Okay, we will keep an eye on that. And I'm glad you brought up Maxi because he's been really fun to watch this year, averaging 17 points per game. That's nine more than last season, nine. Second only in the NBA to Portland's Anthony Simon. So Maxi getting it done. Can we talk about the team that remains at the top of the Eastern Conference standings? I feel like the Miami <laughs> right. Heat don't get no the one love. Does. Right. No they one talks the about they them. deserve. So we're doing right. it now. They've won nine of their last ten games. They're the hottest team in the league. They are. Not Golden State, not Phoenix. The Heat are. Tyler Hero, Jimmy Butler, Bam Adebayo, all of whom are flying under the radar. So, so, so if you're in the East, what's your bis biggest concern if you have to face this Miami team? Well, Sage, this is – a team that's only two years removed from the finals. Uh, and one thing about this team, they have one of the best coaches in the game in Coach Spolster. So you know this team is not going to beat themselves. You know, they're top 10 in both offense and defense. Their net rating is fifth in the NBA. Uh, Tyler Hero is probably the front runner for sixth man of the year. They've added two great veterans in Kyle Lowry and PJ Tucker, both battle tested guys that have been in big games. Um, so this team, although they've been flying under the radar all season, you know that when playoff time comes, this is going to be a team that's going to be reckoned with. So while everyone's talking about Brooklyn and Milwaukee and what the 76ers are doing, this Heat team is, is a blue-collar team, and they're going to definitely be ready for the playoffs. How about Bam Adebayo? Since February 1st, he's been incredible, averaging 22 points and 11 boards and really good defense, too. He is a force, but he'll have his hands full tonight against Giannis and the defending champions up in Milwaukee. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.